Okay, so everybody knows what the P in DPA stands for? It actually stands for professional, but I like to joke about it saying that it stands for phantom power because we get the question all the time. I got the question this afternoon. Do we need phantom power? Yes, we need phantom power. We are talking about condenser microphones. We come from a working relationship with a, a measuring instrument manufacturer called uh, BNK, Brüllen Care, and that philosophy of making measurement microphone is still being kept um, in DPA today. We like the fact that the microphone should be as insignificant or be as transparent as possible. There is a common uh, understanding of a shotgun microphone that they are not very musical. They don't sound very natural. Well, maybe in one position right in front of it, but as soon as you start turning it um, around, then it starts to sound unnatural. And that's why we can't use it in music, because if I put a shotgun inside the, the drum kit, I wouldn't have the natural sound around it. I would have a natural sound in front of it, but there's so much more happening. Nils will come back to that. Um, so when, when it picks up sound from the side, it won't sound natural. And the sum of all those um, uh, sounds entering the microphone will be unnatural. What we did or the engineers at DPA did, they make, made a shotgun microphone that was linear on axis as well as off axis. So it sounds good from all sides, but it just has a higher pickup from the front of it. You could actually turn it around, you can turn it 90 degrees to the sound source and will still sound pretty much the same. It would just be attenuated 9 dB. That's very relevant for the rest of this workshop because that's exactly what we are doing. Because these microphones that we're using on the drum kits are actually shotguns, miniature shotguns. So if you learned in school that you cannot use shotgun in music, now is a good time to leave because that's not true. We can use shotgun microphones or hypercardioids or whatever, the technique is the same. We will use it, we will change the sound by twisting the microphone and moving it closer to the sound source and further away from the sound source. Because close miking, however you want to, no matter how you want to put it, close miking acoustic instrument or instruments in general is a compromise. I hope none of you have heard a snare drum that close. So you actually have no idea what it sounds like, right? Um, we, you have probably not heard a grand piano, just 10 centimeters over the hammers. And nobody ever heard a violin from this position. It's, it's not possible. You cannot put your ear in there. So with, with microphones that are linear in frequency response and they handle the, the sound pressure level and no self noise is added, we can walk away from the violin and then we can place a, a microphone close and then we can hear the two signals and listen and say, okay, this is what it should sound like and this is what it actually sounds like and then we can start compensating. So. Close miking and, and knowing your sound source um, and knowing your microphone goes um, pretty much hand in hand. There are a few facts that I would like to get into talking about the drum set as a musical instrument uh, in order to be able to, to address how we approach it with microphones. Because um, I think the drum set as an instrument, first of all, it's, it's part of almost any kind of musical genre, maybe apart from classical music there, they have them split it out in, in different, on different indivi individuals. But in most modern music, the drum set is a part of it. And it's also an instrument that is highly depending on being mic'd. It's almost always being mic'd, uh, as long as we have a PA system, of course, for, for recording as well. But it's also a very, very complex sound source. It's a very large sound source, as opposed to a uh, clarinet or a saxophone or a flute, um, and it has probably the widest frequency range of any musical instrument. Maybe the grand piano gets close, but, but not all the way, I think, to be honest. But as opposed to the grand piano, where you are very aware, also as a sound engineer, that it's the piano's entire sound that you need to pick up. You don't put individual miniature mics on each hammer or each string, and then maybe... Uh, 
what do you call it, uh, putting uh, uh, gates or compressors or on each of them to separate them from each other. You want the whole sound of the piano. So usually you use a stereo set or AB set uh, inside the piano or slightly outside to be able to capture the whole image of it. You do actually do the opposite on drums most cases. Uh, for, for very acoustic settings, you can very often get away with just two overheads and a, and a bass drum mic, which will give you that image of the entire uh, instrument, the entire drum kit. But very, very often these days, we are close micing drum sets. But the thing is, now all of a sudden we are regarding one whole instrument, but we are pointing small flashlights, especially when we're using highly directional microphones, which we very often wish to do. Um, then we're actually pointing small flashlight beams on these individual sound sources. But we still, I believe, we believe, have to regard this as a whole instrument. The reason why I'm getting into this is because uh, even though we are uh, zooming in on the individual drums, it's a, a, a big challenge that the spill you have, the off-axis sound that you get into your microphone, is not naturally sounding. As you can see here, we have a, a snare drum mic pointing at the snare drum, but actually very, very close to that microphone is the hi-hat. So obviously, even though it's directional, we're going to have a lot of hi-hat in that snare drum mic. And as Bo described, making directional microphones, uh, making them sound nice off-axis is really, really difficult, which is why we never used shotgun mics in the past, where they, their off-axis response was rubbish. Because... You might make a nice snare drum sound with your snare drum mic, and you might make a nice hi-hat sound with your hi-hat mic, but if what you're getting in from your snare drum mic uh, of hi-hat, if that sounds really, really bad, very dull, for instance, wh which it usually would, it would be uh, missing a lot of the, the high frequency, the nice details in the off-axis of the snare drum mic, then you would have to compensate and lift the high frequencies on your hi-hat mic. And that hi-hat mic would pick up a lot of crash cymbal, which actually might be too much high frequencies because now you're getting, now you actually raise that on your EQ. Uh, and that's starting a whole chain reaction that you can't really count on your individual uh, one-channel mic because you have to compensate for what the off-axis response does when, once you go the whole kit around. And that's why we uh, treasure a lot and, and try to work on, on having as linear an uh, off-axis response as possible because you do get spill, but if it sounds good, if it sounds natural, it doesn't really matter. It's okay. You don't have to use gates. You don't have to separate the things to have the perfect isolation anymore. Being a drummer, uh, something theoretical that we're going to do in practice later on, uh, the symbols of course, have a, a wide variety of sounds. If you listen to this, or even even better with a stick, you will hear that there's a lot of high overtones, but there are also some deep undertones, or whatever you could call the core, core tones. Uh, and of course, we want to reproduce the entire sound of the entire symbol. But uh, the tones are generated from different parts of the symbol. So if I start here, but in the middle, moving out, you can hear how it changes its timbre, that you have all the nice high overtones in here by the bell. And as, as you move along uh, on the edge, to the edge of the symbol, you get more and more lower tones. That means, again, that you have to be very careful how you point to a symbol like this and, and how close you are, of course. The same thing, just in the opposite direction, goes for a snare drum or for a drum because it's, it's mounted in the, in the outer ring where the symbol is mounted in the middle. So here you have the lower tones in the middle of the drum. And as you move to the edge, you have the overtones. So again, if you point your mic very roughly down to the to the edge of the drum, you're most likely going to have a lot of overtones and not too much core tone. So you should be aiming at some kind of average of the, the drum head. But we'll do that in, in practice later on. So what I did here, I, um, we, we do uh, uh, under miking today. It's definitely not my favorite placement for, uh, for symbols, but we do it today to uh, talk about, again, off-axis response uh, and uh, proximity. 
Uh, but uh, we have a 499 outside the kick, uh, two 49s on the on the toms, uh, under hit under hits uh, 49 nines, and the same uh, t top snare, bottom snare, and uh, under the under the hi hat here again, really close up. So that's that's the setup right now. So let's try it. Just just a little point because you were mentioning proximity effect, which we didn't get into. Uh, as you probably know. All of you, proximity effect is the effect that when you move closer to a sound source, the low frequency level rises. When you get further away, it reduce, it's reduced. And all microphones, all pressure gradient microphones, which is all directional microphones, <laughs> they suffer from proximity effect, which means that they are adjusted with the tightness of the diaphragm to be flat in the frequency response in a certain distance. These mics are flat in 20 centimeters, which means that in, in this distance, they are pretty much flat. If I want to add more low end, I can move them closer, like this. Or I could do, as we were talking about before, the low frequency information is actually in the middle of the drum head. So I could also move further up and closer to the middle of the, the drum head. That's two ways of doing acoustic EQ, which is one of the key words of what we're talking about today. Microphone placement as your EQ.